today I, w- I want to talk about um, oftentimes, um, and I do, and I do this all the time, Todd. When I'm ever you know doing some sort of training clash, clash. Yeah. Well, sometimes they feel like clashes, right? <laughs> uh, a training class. I always love to ask agents, what do you do? When somebody sends you a referral and then you go out and sell that referral a home and you put 10,000 bucks in your pocket, what do you do for the person that sent you the referral? And um, sometimes they, it's like the thought has never even crossed their mind. Like, I, you know, well, I say thank you, a follow-up text, $25 Starbucks gift card and so forth. It's just not cutting it. It is hard enough to find buyers and sellers. Uh, but when you have somebody on your team uh, meaning a friend, family, coworker, whatever the case is, sending you referrals, uh, you have to come up with a strategy and ensure that that spigot stays open and that they continue to send referrals. So we have a very specific strategy on what we do. Um, so anyways, so the first thing that we do is we keep them in the loop. And, and I'm actually going to show you some text messages uh, in an exchange from this weekend. Um, I had a family, or a couple, I should say. So this will be the third referral that they sent me. And so one of the things that you need to do when somebody sends you a referral is keep that person updated and in the loop during the entire process. And I just do, I normally do text or I'll do video text updates. Maybe every once in a while I'll give them a call. But I am going to include things like, hey, this weekend, you know, we're going to go look at homes. Hey, uh, we just got, we're just now under contract. Hey, now we are just got past the inspection period. And, and, you know, and throughout the entire process, keep them updated. Because what this does, the person who sent you the referral, it keeps them engaged in the process. And it keeps you top of mind. You always want to be top of mind, and you want to motivate them to send you referrals. You don't want them to forget about you. So uh, I think on Thursday, um, so this is, the, you know, I'll start with the upper left-hand corner, and these are actual text messages that I got. So I just sent your contact info to our friends. They have questions about renting their new build in Mesa, and they are buying in our neighborhood. So, uh, and then the next, you know, so then the other guy says, hey, you know, asked you get hooked up with Jake and Carly, right? And I said, yeah, man, just got off the phone with them. Thanks, sweet. And then Ryan, my partner, he jumped in. Thank you so much. And then the wife's like, hey, you know, oh, yay, find them a good one. All right. So now, uh, next day or two days later, hey, guys, just wanted to thank you again. Yeah. I got to work on my spelling. But this just is endearing. That's exactly. just who I am, right? Yeah. You know, just wanted to thank you again for introducing us to Carly and Jake. I'm taking them out this Saturday looking at homes, and we will keep you posted. So now, as we are looking at homes, I actually send them the link of the home uh, that they are very, very interested in. I'm letting uh, my ref- the people who sent me the referrals know, hey, I'm trying to make them your neighbors. We just put in an offer on 4510 Bent Street. They jumped the gun on me. Just heard Jake and Carly's offer was accepted. That's awesome. <laughs> you all work quick. And I'm like, hey, man, it's what we do. Thanks again. And then he fires back, well, then let's play some golf soon. So, I mean, it's yep. they're in the loop, they're engaged, and now i got a follow-up golf appointment and where I'm going to encourage them to send us more referrals. You know, <clears throat> the hardest thing, and, and that's really what the business planning classes are all about, the hardest thing really is finding, I mean, every agent would be successful if each agent had a steady stream of potential buyers or sellers. Uh, you know, the, the issue in our business is that we don't. The issue is that when we wake up in the morning, we don't have another person in a retail environment knocking on our uh, door of our office saying, help, come show me a new home. So you have many different lead generation options to choose from. However, which few bring the highest probability of return for you? And the highest, Mike, you and I have been talking about this for years. You know, we've been talking about go to your database. Look at the people that are in your database and identify the top 10 or top 12 or top 15 people that you think are most likely to refer you business or follow the default mechanism. When someone sends you somebody, then react and, of course, take these things that we're talking about today into consideration. All right. So keep them in the loop. Uh, let them be part of the process. Get them, in, get them excited. Keep them engaged. Now, as you know, uh, for our team, we're really huge 
on housewarming parties. I have yet to throw a housewarming party where I have uh, not received at least one transaction from it. Our best one, we got three. Wow. Um, just by investing eight, nine hundred bucks in a housewarming party. Um, and that's a whole system that, that we have. And, and if people want to email me, I'll definitely share our step by step process on our housewarming parties. But housewarming parties can be a top lead gener generating tool because this is your opportunity to get to know your clients, family, and friends, and collect their names, phone numbers, and, and email addresses and begin to cultivate those relationships and, and develop transactions from it. But housewarming parties are easier if you have help from somebody. And now in this scenario, uh, Flash and Casey sent me the referral. They're moving into their neighborhood, uh, and we are going to throw them a housewarming party and Casey is a planner and Flash is a cook and we're just gonna, we're going to make we're we're going to combine and now I've got them on my team wow. and so then when everybody shows up now they become my ambassador not everybody wants a housewarming party but if you get their friends to say hey we need to have a housewarming party um that your your probabilities of actually getting the housewarming party scheduled um skyrocket but allow somebody else outside of your buyer allow somebody else to be your champion at the event to introduce you and to tell everybody what a great job you know mike over here he just helped uh, you know he helped he helped jake and carly buy them helped us buy a house and helped my other friends buy a house and so forth you know <clears throat> from a housewarming perspective or any other again we're you know my take on this today uh is is increasing the probability of your success you know we're going into 2024 you know we're sitting here and we're having some you know we're, we're talking about the fact that there's 2700 you know buyers in escrow right now when there's normally 5500 um what are you doing differently to get different results than what you either are currently receiving or increasing those results that that you're desiring to increase your production. The people that are doing business in this marketplace are still doing business. And the people who aren't are just complaining about all the things that are happening in the world that are causing them not to be successful in their market. So housewarming parties, you know, this works really great for a driver. It works really great for every specific aspect of a disc assessment. Um, so whether you're a high driver, a high influencer, you love people, social events, things like that, no matter who you are, this the housewarming parties work exceptionally well as one of the many tools. I don't that you I can don't use. care where you fall on yeah. the disc no, assessment my saying. question is is do you like money and yeah but people have to go you know disc wise people have to go about obtaining money different ways but to your point in this example every single one of the disc assessments works parties yep. and and what we're talking about today works for every single one so if you're saying oh i'm, I'm too analytical to go out there and meet with people well, then, Mike, I got to agree with you. You just don't like money. <laughs> or you shouldn't be an agent. <laughs> well, one of the two. You got you to like people. Other, <laughs> you better have some other resource working for you. Let's put it that way. All right. And then the third thing is, and this is so important, is do something extra nice for them. A thank you card, a $25 Starbucks gift card just isn't cutting it. Spend money on them and don't be cheap. You know, we all know Pavlov's dog, yep. right? And ding. ding, and you, yeah, that's a good, good point. Always reward good behavior and positive behavior and encourage that. Your, your, your clients or your contacts or your ambassadors, whatever you want to call them, they have already proven that they can, they have the ability to, and they will help you make money. And so if you may, if you gave me $10,000 tomorrow, Todd, uh, and I'll, you can, you can Venmo that to me. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, I would gladly go out the following night and take you and Lynn out to Ruth Chris or something and invest six, seven, 800 bucks. Cause you just helped me make $10,000. Well, in this, in this sense, people are sending you referrals. You're making a ton of money. You want to reward those behaviors. So for us, I prefer very nice and very expensive dinners because part of it, it is, it is rewarding good, you know, great behavior. But it also helps. It gives you that opportunity to continue to build that relationship with them. And so... 
Um, so uh, the couple that sent us that referral, this will, I think this is going to be dinner number three <laughs> uh, and, and so forth. But why, why wouldn't I spend six, seven hundred bucks? Because they keep yeah. helping me make money. And it's just, you know, do the math. This is part of my marketing budget. Do the math. Yes, would you give me 600 bucks right now if tomorrow is going to give you $10,000, $12,000? No, I'd rather put $500 a month in leads that I get a 1,000 to 1 ratio on, and I don't <laughs> do anything with the leads that come in. Yeah, no, I'd rather spend money instead of making it. No, in reality, Mike, yeah, you know, I, I just want to put a couple of caution signs out there for everybody. You know, we're talking about closing gifts. We're talking about things of this nature. Obviously, you know, there's an IRS limit unless, you, you know, there's some type of marketing associated with it. But here's the thing. You know, you can't give people money. You can't give people mm -hmm. part of your commission. You're not even really supposed to be giving them anything over 25 bucks. But the fact is, is that we're not supposed to reward. Now, consumers that buy and do business with you, yeah, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about. But we're also talking about the people who are referring business to you. And legally, you cannot pay for a referral for real estate. So you have to be very careful in sure. the way that you do it. I totally recommend meeting, you know, if you're not, if, you, if you're, if you like this idea, I think you need to talk to Mike, talk to Ryan, you need to talk to your, the broker, um, and just make sure that when you have everything all set up, you're doing it appropriately. That's, that's my only caution. Just all be right. careful. Yep. Yep, and obviously, yeah, there's a careful way of doing things, and I'm not, you know, I'll yeah, you just, just don't want to make yourself a, a bullseye. You don't want a all. paper show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. So we'll uh, have to edit this podcast now. Yeah, just because yeah, of that. Pro so. yeah probably. <laughs> all right. And we also wanted to just bring up uh, another class that we are doing uh, this Thursday. You know, everything is about generating pipelines and building leads totally. and building those referrals. And so, this Thursday in the Scottsdale office, and everybody is invited. Uh, I, I've just learned you, you're not going to get everybody to overcome objections today, but uh, we do expect rates to drop. And so what are you doing to build that future pipeline with your buyers and your sellers and you know, determine what that point is where they're ready to jump in the game? And we're going to take you through our strategies of how we are building our buyer pipelines and our seller pipelines in today's market. I know we're at 930, but I just want to you know, say to everybody when, you know, when, they're, when you're interested in, in building that pipeline, again, it's all about you know, having somebody that you're going to be able to do business with today. Which way do you want to go about finding that activity? How would you like to do that? Yeah, and I think what happens too is, okay, if this you and Lynn are ready way. to go out and buy a home today, yeah. we're going to go out and buy a home today. If you say, well, we're not ready today because interest rates are here, I got to make sure I got you locked in so that when interest rates get to that point, that tipping point for you, you're ready to go, and I'm ready to go, and I'm not losing you to somebody else. And maybe maybe our clientele is shifting, meaning maybe it isn't the buyer right now. Maybe what it is is it's somebody we sold a house to last year mm -hmm. that needs an investment property that's willing that 8% on an investment property is different than 8% on a personal uh, personal residential home. All right, so that's going to be uh, this Thursday at the uh, Scottsdale office. Everybody's invited. Again, all of our events can be found on the dashboard. Or go to westusacalendar.com, or for this specific event, you can just go to sixfigureevents.com.